Hello, you're watching Daily Debrief and the regional escalation of Israel's genocidal war on Gaza continues. On Friday, the United States bombed Iraq and Syria purportedly in retaliation to strikes on its bases earlier this week. Now, 85 targets were allegedly struck by the US. This is a developing story, so we might see more strikes by the time this episode is out. This has increased the risk of regional escalation very clearly. Meanwhile, the Israeli bombing on Gaza has continued, even as there is talk of some ceasefire. So, in this weekend episode, we go to Abdul to discuss all this. Abdul, thanks so much for joining us. We do know that uh, at least 85 locations have been hit as per the latest reports and uh, you know, we could have more strikes by the time this episode comes out. So, it is a developing story. But uh, what has really, uh, what has been the, what is the state of name? What does it look like the US is trying to do at this point? Well, as per the claims made by the US uh, Department of Defense and Joe Biden, this is primarily uh, these these attacks were carried out in order to stop uh, Iraqi resistance forces to attack their bases. As we all know, ever since the war in Gaza began, uh, uh, U.S. bases across the region have been attacked more than 150 times by the uh, resistance forces in Iraq and Syria. And that has basically led to the killing of at least three U.S. soldiers and around... Uh, 40, 40 plus uh, US soldiers were also injured uh, in the last major attack. And uh, th their idea is to basically uh, uh, target as many uh, places as possible to basically destroy the infrastructure which is used by the uh, resistance forces to attack the US bases. That is the logic uh, with which the US has been operated. US op uh, basically carried out this bombing. They are also trying to send a message to uh, Iranians in as they think that this these attacks are carried out by the Iranian backed forces um of course uh, both of these uh, assumptions uh, it seems are uh, uh, quite uh, you can say fictitious in uh, in many ways uh, primarily because Iran is not directly involved Iran has claimed that it the, it is not directly involved in the attacks and the the that Tax on the UN ba U.S. bases in the region is primarily a result of the U.S. policies of occupation, uh, illegal bases all across the region, the, which people do not like, and they are, therefore they are assisting it. And of course, the war, their U.S. support to the war in Gaza, uh, Israeli war in Gaza. So, uh, given the then their complete uh, uh, refusal to understand the root causes of these attacks. Uh, it seems that the U.S. attacks are another provocation to kind of uh, which may which basically will kind of invite further attacks on U.S. bases. Uh, in fact, the the resistance forces have already claimed that on the same day when the U.S. was bombing different parts of Iraq and Syria, they carried out attacks on An Al Assad and Al Tal bases. So yeah, it seems that U.S. is trying to escalate. Uh, the war in Gaza and make it as uh, because they are already attacking Houthis in Yemen and this will basically provoke further retaliation from the resistance forces. And Abdul, I think the million dollar question which is really on everyone's minds is that what is the extent of this escalation that we are talking about. We do know that, for instance, definitely sections in Israel want to really make this a region-wide war, drag in Iran into this, maybe sections in the uh, uh, US as well. On the other hand, we also have other sections in the US which are trying to sort of, which are not necessarily very keen on this. And we know that once, if something of this sort happens, the consequences could be extremely disastrous. So, uh, do you also see, you know, measures to sort of, uh, you know, maybe not take tensions to that extent? See, as far as US policy is concerned, of course, there is another proposed visit by Anthony Blinken. That would be the fifth uh, in the region since the war in Gaza began in October. And apparently, he's going to visit most of the uh, US allies in the region, along with uh, uh, Palestinian Authority headquarters in Ramallah. Uh, apparently, it is related to the war in Gaza, but of course, this has also, uh, because US, since the first day, has basically, at least in public, maintained that they do not want uh, uh, the regional escalation to happen, though their actions might be contrary to this uh, proclamation they have made. In fact, they have provoked uh, further attacks 
by the uh, forces inside Syria and Iraq and by Houthis since they started attacking their bases. So there is, of course, a contradiction in the U.S. policy, which is which on the one hand, they are talking about uh, trying to deflate the situation, not make it uh, regional. But at the same time, they are basically taking actions which basically invite further escalation. So though, uh, as you uh, to answer your question, of course, there seems on the uh, uh, at least on prince in principle that the U.S. is uh, repeating that they do not want escalation, and therefore uh, there were rumors also spread that uh, the attacks w- basically were carried out in coordination with the Iraqi government, which of course was denied later, um, and therefore it, this was an attempt to make that though this is though this is attack in Iraq, it is not something which is happening without the consent of the Iraqi government. But that is not true, as as the latest statement uh, has proved. So uh, the whatever attempts which U.S. is saying that they want to take to not escalate the situation in the region is basically, uh, at this moment, seems baseless. This has no base there. It is only uh, on paper or rhetorical. Uh, the, uh, the, but the actions basically are provoking much and much reactions. Bring it, dragging the Iranians, for example, in every statement is basically another set of provocation which they are making. Uh, uh, their, their refusal to understand that the Houthis are not uh, targeting the international uh, uh, shipments. They are only targeting the ships which are moving towards Israel. Uh, acknowledge even a refusal to acknowledge that is basically a, a, a kind of a hint towards they are moving towards regional escalation. So yeah, uh, as far as the steps are taken from the U.S., there is no concrete step taken to kind of deflate the situation apart from the rhetorics made uh, time and again. But if you see the restraints uh, observed by actors, regional actors, for example, uh, Hezbollah in Lebanon, uh, despite the repeated uh, uh, provocations made by Israelis, as you rightly pointed out, to kind of drag them into the war, they have uh, res- they have basi- they have been very reserved to their responses and they have only targeted the mil- military uh, uh, targets in- inside northern Gaza and avoided any other uh, attacks. In a similar way, uh, Houthis have also not carried out uh, attacks as, as per their potential. And Iranians, of course, have never, uh, have uh, time and again said that they do not want uh, to get involved into the war. And they have warned the U.S. also not to do the same. Uh, and the only thing, the root cause, which basically causing all of it is the war in uh, Palestine, in Gaza. And again, there you will see that there is no attempt made by the U.S. to kind of uh, implement the ceasefire. That there are talks, of course, but those talks, how uh, fruitful those talks would be, uh, is uh, anybody's guess because uh, the Iran Israeli leadership has time and again refused uh, all the uh, uh, possibilities of a ceasefire right now. And in fact, every time there is a talk of ceasefire, they st- start another ground offensive in some or other part of the of Gaza. So yeah, on the ground, there is no uh, concrete step taken to deflate the situation uh, by the powers which are responsible for uh, the current state in the region. I believe you mentioned the war in Gaza, just wanted to also uh, you know, make an take an analysis from you on that. And I think the biggest news right now is the question of these talks about a ceasefire. There's been a lot of reporting on that, you know, rumors that it is being studied. So could you give us an update as to, as of now, what is uh, happening? Of course, again, a situation which could change in a few hours as well. So as of now, as we record, what is happening? See, uh, whatever we know so far, it seems that Qatar is claiming that there is a, a substantial progress uh, in on the ceasefire negotiations. And according to Qatar's claim, both parties, uh, it means uh, Hamas in pa- Palestine and uh, Israeli uh, representatives are positive about uh, bringing in ceasefire. But as I said before, the Israeli officials, including Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, has k- kind of, uh, uh, despite the fact that acknowledgement that there is a talk going on, they have said that the war will go on for a few more weeks at least. Uh, and, and they have started a new ground offensive. In fact, they plan to start a new ground offensive in the Rafah, which is the 
you can say the basic uh, center where most of the Palestinians who have been displaced from all across uh, uh, all across Gaza are basically living there. And so it's a, mostly the highest uh, 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 huge uh, number of people are living there and they are planning to start a ground offensive there. So this is the current situation at the moment. There is no further development, at least in public, which we know about, about what is the fate of the ceasefire. Of course, there are, uh, and it seems that Anthony Blinken's visit in the region may uh, uh, lead to further uh, push towards uh, uh, kind of consolidating the gains which, are, which Qataris are claiming they have made in the talks. But apart from that, uh, at least from the Israeli side, there is no indication of any ceasefire in the immediate uh, uh, future. Abdul, finally, if you could mention the Rafa uh, offensive, could you just take us through what is happening with the offensive right now as well? See, uh, at this moment, uh, uh, of course, uh, there uh, there are uh, uh, there is a very strong, uh, you can say, feeling insecurity among the people in uh, uh, people which are basically uh, twice displaced already, and uh, it seems that they will they are gradually. Uh, they will be forced to move out from that uh, region as because Israel, uh, as we have seen what happened in Khan Yunis and what happened in the uh, northern uh, uh, Gaza, they basically attack whatever, uh, uh, whether it is a refugee camp, whether it is a hospital, whether it is any other uh, 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 any other insta installation which basically is created temporarily to uh, shelter the Palestinians shelter the displaced Palestinians. It means there is already a, a, a massive attack on Rafah going to happen uh, uh, anytime it is uh, it may start and that will lead to further displacement uh, for, uh, for thousands, hundreds of thousands of Palestinians uh, which are already living in a very uh, bad humanitarian condition. We have seen the pictures how uh, uh, people are living there without uh, proper shelter, uh, the children are uh, deprived of basic amenities, they are hungry, they are uh, without any shelter, without any medicine, and so on and so forth. And this may further lead to uh, 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 the attack, which is uh, imminent, is basically going to further displace the Palestinians from Rafa. And, and the fact is, there is no one, nowhere else where they can move, because nowhere else in Gaza is, uh, is safe. So. It seems that Israel is trying to kind of um, uh, kind of uh, club them all Palestinians in whatever way place they are going. They are attacking. They are forcing them to move so that they cannot kind of have any breathing space. And and that basically is going to happen and is already happening because of the fear in Rafa. Abdul, for updates, we'll come back to you next week with the further developments from the region. That's all we have in today's Daily Debrief. We'll be back with a fresh episode on Monday. In the meanwhile, do visit our website, follow us on all the social media platforms. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button.